Here we're going to begin looking at representations of groups. And to be more specific, we're going to look at complex, finite dimensional representations of groups. So let's look at a definition. So a representation of a group G is a homomorphism, phi from G to GLV, where V is a finite dimensional vector space over C. And let's just recall that GLV is the group of all invertible linear transformations from V to V. In other words, the general linear group of V. And then also, we'll say that the degree of the representation is just the dimension of the underlying vector space. Next, the kind of standard way to think about n-dimensional vectors are column vectors. In other words, CN. And so if V is CN, in that case, we have GLV is GLNC. In other words, it's the group of invertible n by n complex matrices. So if we have a degree n representation of a group, we really have a way of assigning every element from that group to an n by n matrix. Okay, and then, <clears throat> and then here's a little bit more notation before we look at some examples. So we often write phi underscore g for phi of g, and that is the linear map in GLV. So in other words, phi underscore g is a map from v to itself. It's an invertible linear transformation from v to itself. Next, we write phi underscore g evaluated at v. So that's what happens if we put a vector from v inside of this map. Again, that's kind of a longer way of writing it. Sometimes when the homomorphism is understood, we'll just write g dot v for that action as well. Now, before we clean this up and look at some interesting examples, I want to start by looking at a non-interesting example, and that is the trivial representation. And that can be defined for any group and for any vector space. So let's say that g is any group and v is any vector space. And it doesn't even have to follow these rules over here. So the trivial representation phi, so it's got to go from G to GLV. In other words, we need to assign every element of the group to a linear transformation. So what we'll do is we'll assign every element of the group to the identity linear transformation. And that's the trivial representation. So yeah, we're not really getting anything out of that, but it's still an important one to think about. Okay, so let me clean this up and we'll look at some more examples. So let's begin looking at the group Z2. In other words, the simplest non-trivial group. And then let's also recall if we've got a homomorphism, which we do in this case if we have a representation, then the order of the image of an element of the homomorphism divides the order of the original element. And since we're working with a representation here, that means the order of phi sub g must divide the order of g. So since Z2 is generated by the element 1 with the relation 1 plus 1 equals 0, we know that this element 1 has order 2. And so that means its image has to divide, the order of its image has to divide 2. So in other words, the order of its image needs to be 1. In other words, the identity, or it needs to be 2. So let's maybe look at um, a one-dimensional representation first. In other words, we have V equals the complex numbers. And so notice that means that phi will go from Z2 into the general linear group on the complex numbers. In other words, all invertible transformations on the complex numbers, but that's just the multiplicative group of complex numbers. And notice we have two possibilities here. We can send uh, phi of one could just be the number one. In other words, that's the identity. That's the trivial representation. Or we could have phi sub one equals negative one. Notice negative one has order two. So now let's go ahead and check that this is a homomorphism. So notice phi of one plus one, that's the same thing as phi of zero because we're in Z2. But that's the same thing as the number one because it's a homomorphism. Notice we're going from an additive group to a multiplicative group. But that's equal to um, negative one squared. But then that's equal to phi of one composed with phi of one. And so yeah, we do have a homomorphism there. Now if you don't want to think about this in terms of just the generator, you could also write phi sub n equals minus one to the n.
And now notice all odd numbers will go to negative one and all even numbers will go to positive one. But all odd numbers are represented by the number one up here and all even numbers are zero up here in Z2, I should say. Okay, so now let's maybe look at another example. Let's say V equals C2. So in other words, we're looking for a map from Z2 onto two by two matrices. So let's not think about the trivial representation in this case. Um, let's think about some other representation. So we can go from Z2 to GL2C. So we want two by two invertible matrices. Again, we'll just look at what the generator does. So the first thing that could happen is maybe phi uh, sub one could go to one, zero, zero, minus one. So notice that definitely has order two. If you multiply this matrix with itself, you get back to the identity. You could also have phi sub one equals negative one, zero, zero, negative one. That also has order two. And finally, we could have phi sub one equals zero, one, one, zero. That also has order two, which is pretty easy to check. So here it looks like we have you know, three different representations that might be interesting to look at. I'm not saying that that's all of them or that these are definitely different from each other. I'm just saying that here are three different representations. Okay, so maybe I'll clean up the board and we'll look at another example. So now we're gonna look at representations of Zn. So let's recall that Zn is generated by a single element one with the rule that if you add one to itself n times, you get back to zero. So in other words, it's made up of n elements, zero, one, two, all the way up to n minus one, where our addition is our operation and that's happening mod n. So you would maybe want to put like bars over this to notice that we're really working with equivalence classes, but generally we kind of play it fast and loose for that. So let's first look at some one dimensional representations. In other words, V is just the complex numbers, which means we want to look at a homomorphism phi from Zn to the multiplicative group of complex numbers. So let's notice that since the number n in Zn is equal to zero, in other words, phi sub n should be the same thing as phi sub zero, but that should be equal to the identity inside this multiplicative group of complex numbers, which is equal to one. But then on the other hand, this phi sub n is also equal to phi sub one added to itself n times, but then since this is a homomorphism, this should be equal to phi of one composed with itself n times. So now, if phi sub one equals z, which like I said before is a uh, non-zero complex number, then we need z to the n to be equal to one. In other words, z is an nth root of one. Now there are n different roots of one in the complex numbers, but we might as well choose a nice one to be the image of our generator of our group under this representation. And so let's just say that phi sub one, in other words, the image of our generator is equal to e to the two pi i over n. In other words, this is cosine two pi over n plus i sine two pi over n. So it's pretty easy to check that if you raise this to the nth power, you get e to the two pi i, but that's exactly equal to one, again, by this Euler's formula, which I've used um, down here. So this is a pretty standard choice of a one-dimensional representation of Zn, but notice we could have chosen a couple of others. We could have chosen phi of one to be e to the two pi uh, m i over n for m equals zero up to n minus one. Notice that gives us like something that looks like n different representations of this group where we're letting m be all of these different values. So notice if m equals one, we re-achieve this representation. But then if m equals zero, we re-achieve the trivial representation. Okay, so um, let's maybe clean up the board and we'll look at a two-dimensional representation of Zn. Now we're gonna look at a two-dimensional representation of Zn that has some nice geometric intuition to it. So I'm gonna start by drawing a plane. 
But the tricky thing here is that each axis on this plane represents complex numbers. So this is really a real four-dimensional space, but it is a two-dimensional complex space. And now I'm gonna go ahead and draw just an arbitrary vector in this plane, so I'll call it V. And notice that's gonna be of the form maybe A, B, where A and B are complex numbers. Okay, and now in order to get a handle on what our representation is, what we really need to know is what is the two by two matrix defined by phi sub one? In other words, the generator of Zn, we know that's one. Well, where is that mapped under our homomorphism? And like I said, we want some geometry to be behind this. So what we'll do is we'll allow that homomorphism to take this vector V and rotate it counterclockwise by an angle 2 pi over n. So notice that is 1 nth around the circle. But then from linear algebra, we know matrices with this action have a pretty standard form, and we can write that down. So phi sub 1 is equal to cosine 2 pi over n minus sine 2 pi over n, sine 2 pi over n, and then finally cosine 2 pi over n. In other words, this is a rotation matrix which takes a vector and rotates it 2 pi over n radians counterclockwise. And then we can actually use the fact that phi is a homomorphism to say that phi sub m will be equal to phi sub 1 to the m power. In other words, this matrix multiplied to itself m times. But again, from linear algebra, this is equal to cosine 2 pi m over n minus sine 2 pi m over n, and then down here sine 2 pi m over n, and then cosine 2 pi m over n. Good. So now we've seen a one-dimensional representation and a two-dimensional representation of Zn. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the board and we'll look at that summary. To summarize, we've looked at the standard representations of Zn. So we looked at a one-dimensional representation, that's a homomorphism from Zn to the non-zero group of complex numbers under the operation of multiplication, and that takes a number m in Zn to e to the two pi i m over n. And then we looked at a two-dimensional representation, and that is a homomorphism from Zn to two by two matrices with complex entries that are invertible. And that takes a number m in Zn to this rotation matrix, cosine two pi m over n minus sine two pi m over n, sine two pi m over n, and cosine two pi m over n. And you might say, well, are these different from each other? Other than the fact that this is two dimensional and one dimensional, maybe some ways they're related. And that's actually something that we will explore in the upcoming videos. Okay, that's a good place to stop.